Hey everyone, uh, my name is Kelvin and welcome to my uh, Procreate watercolor tutorial video. So in this video I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Um, basically I'm going to try for the first time to make a three-part series. And the reason I want to break it into three parts is because this is actually a pretty big project. Uh, I'm actually going to paint this whole sort of inside living room scene. And uh, this scene is heavily inspired from one of my uh, favorite artists, Iraville. And uh, she's painted a scene like this and it just it's really inspiring and I want to try and see if I can create something similar. So in this video, the first part in the series, I'm going to just paint the couch and these end tables. And then in future videos, we're going to do the picture frames, the lamps, uh, and the uh, plants here. So I've obviously got my sketch already made. So I'm going to start with this couch here. So I'll make a new layer and I'm going to make sure I'm painting underneath the texture. And uh, in this uh, tutorial series here, I'm going to use a new paper texture. I'm going to use the Fabriano Mill uh, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, it just has a really nice, uh, nice look. It's quite similar to the original paper texture that you probably already have. Um, it just has a little bit of a different pattern. It seems a little bit sharper. Um, I just want a chance to show it off in this video, but it's not, not totally necessary. So I'm going to choose a nice red color for the couch and I'll just quickly lay that out. So I'll choose a pretty big size um, and I'll just quickly outline the couch just like this. And then as soon as I'm done, um, I can sort of turn off the sketch uh, and then and see what I've painted a little bit easier. Okay, so I've got all the color laid down, so I'll just switch off the sketch for a minute. And you can see I have a lot of hard edges, so I will go in there with the water blender and just sort of uh, smooth a few of those out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, there's plenty of areas where I could go in there with the eraser and make it perfect, but I actually like the imperfect stuff. Um, on bigger scenes, you can get away with a lot more of little mistakes and kind of wobbly lines. Um, it just has a kind of charming look. So now I'll turn uh, the sketch back on and I'm going to use the selection tool to break up this couch into different um, panels, I guess you'd call it, different shadings. So in my sketch, one thing I did try to do is add a light source. So I'm going to try to imagine everything in this scene is being lit by light coming from this direction. So using the selection tool, I'm just going to go in there and just sort of, I guess, um, outline different areas and go to the hue, saturation, and brightness and just darken them or lighten them depending on what I'm imagining is happening with that light source. So I've got the basics um, kind of laid out here. Um, I do want to add some sort of dynamic lighting. So using the freehand tool, if I imagine the light is coming, it's going to be hitting this part of the couch a little bit more than this end. So I'll just circle uh, that area and then I'll feather it out, go to hue, saturation, and brightness and just raise the brightness. And then you can see over here I have a stronger lighting than over here. And I'll continue with that theme, uh, adding some highlights and shadows and just try to bring out some depth here. So in this area down here, I'm imagining there's a bit of a shadow being cast by the arm of the chair. So I'll make that dark shape. Then I'll use the water blender and I'll just break up that edge. Uh, and now you can see I have that fade sort of to a shadow over there. And also I want to add in um, a little bit of detail to the top of the arm of the chair. So using that freehand tool, I'll just make a selection like this. And then I'll kind of go back over kind of almost like a, almost like a crescent shape. Uh, and then if I lighten that up, you can see it, it kind of gives it the appearance that that's the top of the arm of the chair. And I'll do the same thing over here. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, I want to add some uh, line detail, so I'll make a new layer. I'll choose a bit of a darker red color, and then I'll choose the fine liner pen. Now I'll go in there and I'll try to outline some of these cushions. There we go. And I'll just go to that layer and um, I'll set it to multiply. And I'll just raise the opacity and set it to a point where I can just barely see it. Just where it adds just enough contrast that helps me kind of define where the cushions are. And now I can turn off the sketch and take a better look at this. Um, I think it looks pretty good, but I do want to go in there with the water blender 
and just soften up some of these kind of uh, crazy areas uh, where my selection boundaries got a little bit out of hand. Uh, but I got to make sure I'm on that layer. I was actually on the layer with these uh, outlines. There we go. And I, I'm losing a little bit of contrast over in this corner. So I'll do one more selection and try to add a better shadow in this area. And then I'll use the uh, water blender to just sort of soften it up. And in areas where my I feel like my selection boundary is just in the wrong place, um, I can actually use the water blender and I can push that boundary to match the outlines a little bit uh, more uh, accurately. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I can move on to the pillows, uh, but maybe I want to try and play with the brightness and saturation of the couch just to make it pop a little bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I can work on the pillows. So, you know, when you're stacking colors, you know, there's this transparent effect that happens, and there's a few ways you can work around that. But I want to just make it easy on me and make this couch one, basically one layer or in the end, one painting when I'm done. So what I'll do is I'll sort of carve out some light areas for the pillows and then I'll just paint them on top. So if I go to my sketch, I can see the uh, square and rectangular outlines of where the pillows are supposed to be. So as long as I have the couch layer selected, I can grab the selection tool and just basically outline these uh, areas for the pillows just like this and then go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll just sort of brighten my way through, not all the way to white, but I'll leave a kind of, you know, almost a gray tone behind it. And you can see there is a line here. So I'll go to my blender tool uh, and just sort of, sort of blur that line just to soften that. Because when you're working with layers and layers of color, uh, sometimes that will come through and you'll see it on the final pillow and the pillow will look kind of transparent. So now I'm going to do the same thing over here. And now you can see the lines I drew. Remember these ones I drew earlier? They're not on the same layer as the couch. So I'm going to go in there with the eraser tool and just erase those lines. Whoops, I got to make sure I have the right layer selected. So I'll make sure the actual line layer is selected. I'll grab the eraser and then I'll erase where those lines go behind the pillows. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And now I'll just merge the lines and the couch together just so I can keep everything a bit more organized. So now I've got these areas cut out for the pillows. So to start painting those, I'll make another layer on top of the couch uh, and I'll choose my first color for the pillow. And one of the reasons I did it this way is because I actually want there to be a little mistake because I know when I paint the pillows, it's not gonna perfectly line up with the edge. Uh, and I think when you see how that looks, uh, you'll agree with me that it has a kind of charm to it. And I'm on a new layer above the couch and I'll just sort of roughly paint in a, one of these pillows. And here's that edge I'm talking about. I mean, there's no way I'm gonna go in there and make this perfect. So all the time this pillow will have this kind of sort of awkward edge around it. And I just love the way that looks. Okay, we've got the first pillow uh, outlined there. Now I'll choose a color for the second pillow and uh, I'll just fill that one in. And if you go over the edge, it's okay because we're on a different layer and we can just use the eraser tool and kind of uh, cut back on it. Okay, there we go. And for patterns, you know, I think I'm gonna keep it simple for this video. So for this pattern, I'm just gonna do stripes. So I'll use the freehand selection tool and I'll just make a bunch of uh, stripe patterns like this. And I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness and I'll brighten those. And then I'll add one more stripe at the end here. And for this pillow, I'll just do polka dots. So on the same layer, I'll just select a little bit of a darker version of that color. And I think the abstract round is fine. And at a pretty small size, I'll just go in there and try to draw some polka dots here. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna do basically the same thing over here, uh, but this time I'll use some different colors and some different patterns. There we go, so I've got all my pillows laid out and uh, I wanna add some lighting to the pillows in a similar way that I did when I added lighting to the couch. So I'll grab my selection tool, make sure it's on freehand. And first, I think I wanna add some shadows to these pillows. So I'll just go ahead and just sort of select kind of a random uh, area on the lower side of the pillow and I'll feather that out and then I'll use the brightness and saturation here and just lower the brightness of the bottom. And now for the highlight, I won't feather it. It's gonna be kind of a hard highlight. 
And that's a trick if you want to give the illusion of um, interior lighting, which is usually much harder than the sun, actually. There we go, so I've got some random areas. I won't feather it, I'll just brighten those areas, and then I'll lower the saturation just a little bit. So when you have transparency, you're usually going to raise the saturation, but in this kind of highlight where it's just bouncing off the surface of the pillows, I usually like to desaturate those. So I think this looks pretty good, but I do want to add one more thing. Now, um, if you've ever tried to decorate a room, you'll probably have found that you usually need something to anchor the room. And uh, the same is true when you're painting scenes, especially in interior scenes. You usually need something dark to kind of anchor the room. So in this scene, what I want to do is add in a black pillow just to sort of anchor this uh, couch scene. And I'm going to add the black pillow right here. So I'm going to make a space for it by going back to the uh, this layer where I just painted the couch. And I'm going to add another hollow spot. So this pillow is going to be in the back. So I just made that space for it. Hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll just brighten that area, desaturate it a little bit. And uh, you can see it has a boundary. So I'll use the water blender. Uh, and just break up that edge that kind of happened by accident there. Now I'll turn on my pillow layer and then just like that I have a new place to add a pillow. So I'm going to select my pillow layer and I'm going to grab the abstract round and I'll just use black this time and I'll just make a nice little black pillow. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I will add a nice kind of gentle highlight to this pillow. So I'll make a selection like that and then I'll brighten it up just like that. I think that looks pretty good. And the black pillow really adds something to the scene. I don't know, it gives it some kind of contrast. I just like the way that looks. So now the couch is pretty much totally done and I can move on to doing these two end tables here. So I'm gonna turn off the couch and the pillows and I'll make a new layer and I'll just grab a um, kind of a soft brown color and I'll use the abstract round brush to just fill these out really quickly uh, on a different layer. So after I have the tables roughed out, I can go in there with the water blender and just do what I usually do and just kind of break up those uh, hard edges that kind of happened by accident. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, now I can go in there with the selection tool and since the lighting is coming from the back, the top of the table will get more light than the side of it. So I'll just use the selection tool to sort of isolate that sort of strip on the side of this table um, and then I'm going to darken it a little bit. So hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just darken it just so I can get some contrast there. And actually, at this point, I can probably turn off the sketch um, because these are pretty simple shapes. So same thing over here. Um, I'll grab the selection tool, select the side, just like that. Hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll darken it. And now for the legs, um, usually what I want to do is add a shadow to them. And often I do that like this. I'll just sort of select a random part of each leg and then go along the bottom uh, and then I'll darken the back of the legs like that. But I do lose a little bit of contrast with the edge of the table. So what I think I should do is just kind of uh, use the eraser tool and just kind of cut away the very top of these legs just to make a kind of uh, accident on purpose kind of effect that gives us the contrast that we need. And I'll do the same thing to this one but I forgot to do the shadow earlier, so I'll do it after this. So I'll just grab the selection tool, just make a random selection, try to fit it between there, uh, and then I'll just do the hue, saturation, and brightness, and just darken it a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. You can zoom out here, and now I'll turn on the uh, other layers so we can see what we've painted here. We're gonna have to do this a few times uh, in the next two videos, but this is the first time we're gonna encounter it in the series, and that's where you have two paintings on top of each other where you have a transparency issue. So in this example, the table um, is on top of the couch here and we're having that transparent effect and we, I don't really like the way that looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the layers panel and here's the layer where we painted these uh, little tables on and I'll make a copy and uh, I'll turn off the top one there. So now I have two copies of the same uh, illustration and uh, I'm gonna select the bottom one. I'll go to hue, saturation and brightness and I'll set it to pure white and it looks like this one disappeared, but they're both still there. They just, they've just become white, and on the white background you can't see it. And now we can see that a little more clearly in the layers panel. So you can see in the thumbnail there's just two white tables there. So now I'm going to duplicate that layer. I think three times is good. And then I'll merge all three together. And what this does is it creates a super opaque uh, white version of those tables. 
So it exactly covers up the couch. So when I turn on that layer above, um, it perfectly lines up with the white version and it covers up uh, the couch just exactly where we need it. So that's pretty good. So I'm gonna merge the uh, white tables and the normal table together onto one layer. And uh, this does have a cool side effect where I can actually uh, move them around and kind of reposition the scene. And it sort of takes that white background along with it and always covers up the couch exactly where we want it. So that wraps it up for this video. Um, this is just the first part in a probably three part series. And uh, I'll try to work on part two tomorrow. So if you have any questions or comments about this uh, process, um, I do try to read every single one of my comments. So just leave a comment down below. But uh, other than that, guys, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.